Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Donna Scrapbook Sage. I have a fun craft I want to share with you today. It's going to be a design team project for Carolyn's Craft Tree. I am working with her vintage Christmas recipe cards. You go ahead and check her out at Carolyn's Craft Tree on Etsy. And what I'm going to do is be making some Christmas cards today using her kit. It's such a fun kit. And I have been playing around with doing collage, masterboard collages, and I've just been having a lot of fun with them. So I wanted to use her kit to make bases and for Christmas cards. So let me show you sort of a, the concept that I'm going for. Excuse me. So I took some papers that I had just in my stash that were Christmas themed papers. Hopefully I'll, I have enough here. Um, so I took some reds and greens and then used some of my scrap papers, like um, scrapbook page pages, and just built things up and um, used her um, main elements, her journaling cards, as a main element. So when I cut this across, I'll probably get a card here, a card here, and maybe a sideways card here. And I may put Merry Christmas or do something. So I might get four cards out of this, but I know I'll at least get two. So I want to go ahead and make some collages with you, do a couple collage pages, and then cut them down into the cards. And I will show you a couple of cards that I have made doing this process already. So um, I just took the collage the collages that I made and she has some embellishment pieces. So I went ahead and cut out the collage with um, a journal, a small journal card. There was the main focus. And then I put the, um, the gingerbread man and Merry Christmas over that one. And then this, she has a smaller journaling card as well as the bigger journaling card you'll see in her kit. So I'll go ahead and show her kit to you. I have some other small pieces of, ephemera that if I feel like I want to layer things up I may use it. I've got a couple pieces of her ephemera here already cut out because I've been working on this project um, a couple different ways. So I make I will cut out some of these pieces um, after I show them to you and those will be the pieces that I'm going to be using for collage and I'll just use her kit as much as possible for the collage and add a few pieces that here and there if I feel like it's needed. So um, she, this is, um, these are her big journaling pieces. Aren't they really cute? So I, I don't know if I can read them all. Let's see what they are. So there is a plum pudding, a Kris Kringle cookies, and it's so fabulous. It has the, the handwriting of whoever, of the cook. And then this is Christmas cake and jello plum pudding, it looks like. Cranberry bread and a Christmas cheese ball. <laughs> really, really cute. And then Christmas plum pudding is here. And this is some type of bread. And then cookie, some type of ginger. I don't know if that's... It's hard to tell. A holiday layer cake. Another plum pudding. And then the Christmas pudding. That's not really clear there. So holiday layer cake, cranberry bread, jello plum pudding, Christmas plum pudding. She's got the embellishment for Merry Christmas. Holiday bread pudding, plum pudding, Christmas pudding. Grandma's Christmas plum pudding, the Christmas cheese ball, and that's typed, that's cute. And then she has a couple of embellishments here, and a couple more, a few more on this page, and they're just the smaller versions of the same recipes. So um, I thought these pages were just great for um, these embellishments and everything would be great for cutting down and um, making those pages. So I'm gonna cut down a couple more. Let me see which direction I wanna go. 
I've got this here and I'm going to cut the bigger pieces. I may not even need to cut them because I'm going to, if we just want to tear, have them be the background, I think that could be really cute. So, but I'll just cut things really quick um, as I'm chatting with you. So I want to thank you for coming to my channel. Once again, this is Dawn at Scrapbook Sage. Um, I'm so grateful for Caroline for letting me um, show off some of her digital kits. She's got some amazing ones out there, and it's always fun to be inspired by them. And I'm not worried about being perfect because a lot of these might just be cut off. I don't know if I'm going to, I might do a more neutral one. I'm a little bit worried I might not have enough green with me, but, or in reds, but we'll see what happens. And then I thought this is another good way for you to um, use as you're layering up and making your collages to use your Christmas washi paper washi tape as well so um, those are just some things to think about if you want to pull together for making a collage and some of those things in your stash that you want to bash um, those are always great to use and you don't have to make small cards here like you can make bigger Christmas cards I have small ones um, planned but maybe I'll make a couple big ones too I know I have the envelopes for them already I think that's always the challenge for me is making sure I have envelopes for cards that I make and we can make them but it's just harder to make the bigger envelopes and I do have a couple pieces of paper from a paper bag from the store that I might grab and reach over here too to add just to add a little bit more type of paper that is a little bit more rustic can't believe this year has gone by so quick so now I'm going to cut into some more of the colorful ones and we'll see how um, those work into the design here This is a really cute little boy here holding a little puppy. It makes me think of my ne nephew. So there's a sweet story. So when my mom, um, my mom and my sister lived really close to each other about, um, and my nephew, he was thinking that my mom was a little bit lonely when she was still with us and decided he'd buy a dog for her. So he did. And. Yogi ended up being his dog within a couple weeks, <laughs> but his heart was so sweet and it wasn't a cheap dog. You know, he, he spent some money cause he wanted to make sure grandma wasn't alone. And I think that was really, really sweet. So that picture just reminds me cause Colby was about that age. He was, he was pretty young back then. So it was sweet. Um, anyways, I love seeing all these old recipe cards. I um, am wanting to make one similar, uh, a similar pack. I have um, inherited a lot of my mother-in-law's recipe cards and I have a plan to make some a digi um, with her things as well. And I hope to make a journal for my sister-in-law sometime down the road. She doesn't watch me, so I don't think I'm giving anything away unless she surprises me and says something Michelle if you watch me and you see this you need to let me know <laughs> that will be really funny if you do because I know it may not be your favorite I know crafting's not your deal but anyways um we um none of our moms are with us anymore we all are sort of um we've got our, uh, my husband's dad is we get to spend Christmas and Thanksgiving with so 
we're very blessed to still have them with us. Um, and we're at this year, so we're lucky in this year and that we're a small family up here with just um, the two boys and dad. But everything is getting all locked down. It's a little bit of a challenge. So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're having fun planning your holiday meals. There's just a couple weeks and Thanksgiving will be there. And then Christmas is just around the corner. We do pretty much a traditional meals um, for the holidays. So that's fun. I don't think I need to cut all these down. If I need a couple more pages, I will go ahead and do them. But um, I'm going to leave these intact for right now. And let's see what I can do here. So my thought was to pull in some of the scrap paper. I've got some scrap papers here. And I just want to do a couple master boards. And I'm going to grab that um, a couple pieces of... that um what is this brown bag <laughs> you know how that brain of ours sometimes doesn't work as quick as we want it to i if you watch my videos you see me like okay what is that word i know it's there it'll come to me in a minute just be patient <laughs> so thanks you guys for being patient with me um okay so those are torn up i will tear them down a little bit more if it's needed, I'm going to look at the pieces here that um, may be main elements. Like this guy will be a main element. This I can tear down, tear down and use on a couple pieces of the page. Okay. So I am just going to, let's see which way I'm tearing. And decide which way I want to tear so there's not a lot of white space. I'm just going to tear these in half and get some. Um, it's not going to matter because when I usually make collage pages, and if I know they're going to go into a book or something, sometimes I try to make them balanced so that it's usually my idea and it helps. It may help if you're working with bigger pieces to just use them up to like, if you have a bigger piece like this, I'm going to put them in each of the corners and I'm being way too precise here for this project. So my craft table is deciding to squeak on us, isn't it? Okay. Well, it's going to rain here all day. It's gotten dark already. I'm like looking outside and it's a lot darker than I want it to be. Let me move this back up into frame so you guys can see what I'm working on. And I'm just going to tear some of these recipes in half. And you can see I got a lot of that white space there. It's really not going to matter. So I don't know when you make collages if you like to use little tiny pieces and layer them up or if you like to have the bigger pieces and have them um, overlap each other more. I'm going with bigger pieces today um, for a couple reasons to see if we can get two done in a shorter amount of time. And to, um, since I don't see people do collage with really with bigger pieces, um, as much, 
And I'm just going to, if I need feel like I need to color those in later, I will. I'm going to just sort of see how they cut off so I don't have to waste the ink. If I, um, if it ends up being a part of a, a part of one of the cards, then that's great. I can go ahead and just put some ink on it like this. Um, if it doesn't, then, and it gets cut off and it becomes a tag or a piece of scrap, then I'm not worried about wasting that ink. So, and the time. Because I know maybe everything on, in this project may not be salvaged. And I don't know if there's a really a rhyme or reason to collage. I'm sure there is. I'm not by any means. I'm not professional when it comes to collaging at all. I just know I like to have variety. And I might want to have even more than what I'm giving myself right here. I think I would have wished I had some more scrapbook paper and another color with me. But I can get this to work. So these um, scrapbook pages I just have from, I had a design bundles download and they had some cool vintage designs. I don't know if I want to use all of that. So I really do like to be a little bit scrappy in the process. And this is a coffee dyed piece of green line paper that I think I'll be using a lot more. I made it longer so that when you fold it over it goes across a whole journal and I like that. So I don't know, some of you guys might be, um, you've noticed on this one, I've just tore down the images that didn't have any focal points. Now, I think the next one I'll probably tear down um, some pages with more focal points, just so we can see how those layer up. I know that if since this is more neutral, I'll be able to just take the the um, focal points that I have available and put them where I need them to be. So I know that for me is just I know I'm safer that way. So it is a good strategy. So there's two ways that you can do this. Um, one is to go ahead and um, cut down 
your page. So I probably could have done this more, I probably could have done this better and if I laid it out this way and cut it in half and folded it in half, it would have been more automatic as far as um, I could have even folded these two pieces in half and used it that way. And it's not that you couldn't do that, but we have the designs going the opposite direction. In my mind, since I have been, um, I've had more of the idea of um, cutting out like the five by three and a quarter or four, four and a quarter and three and a quarter pieces, I um, went ahead and used the lamp, used it in landscape instead of portrait. But that's just an idea that you could do. That's an idea that you can do. So as I'm looking here, I'm looking at this cute little page here. I'm just gonna cut this guy in half. And this will be one of my focal points. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set him right there. And you could tear and edge that. You can go either way you wanna go. And let's see what I have here. I've got this cute little piece of washi that I'll put right here. And I think that's really sweet. And then I can do something over on this side as well. That will take up all the space. I'm gonna use that on the other page, I think, that I was talking about. I like the Santa there too. So this is a fun way to just sort of use up those scraps. And um, I've always been a little bit intimidated by collage because I felt like I've had a hard time coordinating things together. But what I've noticed recently is if I take a paper pack that I really want to work with and use that as um, use that more than trying to use the scraps, then I know I can use up my scraps as I try to balance balance out the primary paper kit. And as a result of doing that, I have a lot more fun. Um, I don't feel like it's such a struggle. Okay. I'm gonna set, let's see. I'm just gonna grab my, um, paper cutter and show you what I'm thinking. So um, most of my cards are, um, it's 11 and a half or 11. So it's five and a half. So if I go five, I'm going to go a little bit bigger than that because I'm going to cut the edge off. And I, I'm doing this wrong. I need to do it um, three and a quarter because it's it's sitting long, right? So let's bring this over here. I'm going to try to save this piece. So this is why I mean I, I knew I would lose some pieces because I was I was thinking backwards there. So I've got four and a quarter here. I could probably bring it to four, cut those off. And then I've got the five here. And let's see what I have here. If I can show you what is available for the cards. 
So here is a card that it didn't really work out for me before, but I could play this with us a little bit and maybe make that into a card there. So, and this is the, the extra piece. So that that's the extra piece that we have there. And this is the piece that I was thinking I'd put on the card that I planned. So I might need to cut along the bottom and the side a little bit more and then I'm good to go. So I just measured that a little bit wrong. And I'm really sorry my table's squeaking. Let's cut it along the side. So this can be the primary base or you can have some other paper behind behind it. But that's sort of the idea of the card. It would even be cute to like put like a Merry Christmas or something down here. And you can use your leftovers to build up that extra layer if you want and make a, a label with it. So that is sort of the concept that um, I'm thinking of with the cards. There's one. Let's see if I can cut this one a little bit better. So I'm going to cut this down. Let's see. I'm going to go about five. Do five and a half here. Do five here. And I know it looks like I'm wasting a lot, but like I said, I'll probably use those for mats, for words and stuff like that. So look how cute that is. That turned out really cute for a card. And you can do deck the hall, deck the halls or Merry Christmas or something, or type deck the halls on the inside. And this is what it would look like on like a matted one. That would be really cute. So there is, those are the cards. Let's see if we can make another master board really quick. And um, by using the main pieces like we were talking about. So if that becomes the main piece, I might be able to just cut that down more. So we'll sort of see how that works. So here are some more of the main, the main pieces. And I am going to cut and tear cut and tear into things. Yeah, I think it will give us a little bit more um interest on the page and it may not be as um, uniform. So I think I've seen other people like when they craft, they go from like side to side when they make um, their collages. So maybe I will employ that strategy as I just take the pieces and I'm so bummed. This table is squeaking. I'm going to have to put some oil on there. Okay. And I am just being really random in the pieces that I'm grabbing. And I'm just gonna see if I can work from side to side. I'm 
I'm even going to turn a page, a piece on its side to give it a little bit of more entrance, interest. Okay, and I have this little element here. I sort of like it if I put another piece down. I might want to use that little house as my primary element. Yeah, that's sort of cute. So I'm thinking my two primary elements might be the house and that right there. So as you're working along, you can do it either way. Or it might be this little puppy down here. Like I said. Carolyn has done such a good job at putting these together. The colors go really well together and make it a fun collage. And this would be a really fun, um, since she has all the cards, you can go ahead and print out the cards and have the recipes in with the card. And that could be a cute little gift wrapped with a bow or something. I don't like that all the way there. So I think what I'm going to do here, even though I was working along the, um, trying to work myself over, I'm just going to bring this to the edge because it has a natural edge already and I want to sort of break that up. This is a really cute design. I'll set this right up here. So I think these would, um, you could also cut down these master boards and use them in your journal with the actual journal cards as well. Like this can be a journal card that you have available um, as like a belly band or something. And then you can use these journal cards behind it and it, that'd be really cute. And since I know I'm probably going to get four pieces out of these, I'm okay with having these two being right, this and this being on the same page because they probably won't be on the same card. And I'm carrying the wrong way. So I think that went a lot faster and I didn't, and you don't necessarily have to have extra pieces of paper from another source. I have a couple there, but on this other side, I don't think I even need to use it. If I tear this down, I maybe I might use some of the um, paper bag. And then the other thing I thought would be really cute I um, is, I haven't planned it for this video, but 
is stamping onto the paper bag to give it a little bit more texture. Let's see. I have a little bit more of a piece over here. Yeah, I think that's really cute. So if you want a really fun way to make some unique cards this definitely is a way that you could go here are a couple other elements i don't know if i will put them on here or not but you know that that's an option like if there's a if you like one design over the other you can definitely do that so anyways i'm not going to keep you um as i cut down these into cards i think you have the idea but here are the two master boards that we make uh, this was um Two of the bat, yeah, two of the master boards that we made, and I showed you um, what I cut down um, before, and there's that one there. So it, it was a lot of fun doing this. Thank you for joining me, and go ahead and hit the like button. And um, I'd love for you to put, um, if you decide to go over to Carolyn's Craft Tree and get this set, go ahead and post your um, photos of um, what you make in the link below. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Bye bye.